Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I have a whole bunch of new makes to show you. Okay, so here I am upstairs in my sewing room. Marta is asleep over there. Hopefully she stays asleep. I'll show you what she looks like. She's basically halfway underneath um, my little dresser over there. I guess it's maybe cooler down there and uh, it is quite a hot day. We are actually on our way out of town for a little trip today for just 24 hours, but I wanted to hop on first and show you the whole range of stuff. Not all, all of it is in frame right now um, for you guys to see. So I have completed more than 10 things from my summer wardrobe or for my summer wardrobe this year. And some of them you've seen it in my plans. Some of them are slight improvements on things that I made last year. I mean, I'm including that because I think it's really important to reevaluate your makes and decide if they're working for you. And if not, find a way to make them work for you better so that you wear them because that's what's most important, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go through and hopefully I'll remember <laughs> Hopefully I'll remember everything and not have to refer to my notes. Okay, so you may hear a little bit of background noise today. I live in the middle of a town. It's a Saturday morning. I do have this mic on, which will hopefully pick up my voice better, but at the same time, there's only so much I can do. So please excuse me if it is a little noisy, but um, I can't close all the windows or I will suffocate. <laughs> so I hope you understand. Okay, let's start off with this. This is the Gilbert top from Helen's Closet. This was definitely on my plans for summer. And for this top, I used a remnant of linen that I got in a sale two years ago at the store 18 Weights in Toronto. And my dear friend Melanie just brought it to me I don't know, like a month ago. And so this was an irregular piece. It was probably about a meter and a half, and I do even have a little bit left, but I had to be very judicious on how I cut it. And especially with plaid, that's a little more difficult, right? So I decided to make some fun choices to, um, to take, a, take advantage of that plaid. So for instance, you can see here that I cut the pockets on the bias and I actually pinned them on twice to decide like, do I want them this way? Do I want them that way? And ultimately this, this I thought actually that they would go the other way, but this way actually worked the best. I did the tie front option. This is one of the best way, one of the best set in sleeves I've ever done. And I don't know if it's the design or how they described it. I don't know, but it's just a really good set in sleeve. And then on the back yoke, I also cut it on the bias and tried to set it in a way that you get the, the plaid in an interesting spot. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. The linen is lovely. I haven't washed this. I don't think I pre-washed it. And the reason why I didn't pre-wash it is because um, I don't really use a dryer here and so I didn't really have to worry about shrinkage. So I don't think that I pre-washed it, although I'm, I'm kind of doubting myself on that now. Um, I made the size six. It fits me exactly right. And because this is linen, and of course linen is a little bit more stiff, maybe in like a softer cotton, it would feel a little more comfortable. Um, I'm hoping as I wash it, I, I, already it's it's not a, a stiff, stiff linen. Um, it definitely has some movement to it, but I'm hoping it'll soften up even more. Like I said, I made the six. I could see myself sizing up to the eight or even the 10 to get a little more of a relaxed look. Um, and I would love to do a hack of this for a dress. But overall, I think this turned out beautifully. It feels very crisp and clean and well finished. Okay, next is one that I told you was on my plans and I had actually already made it. So if you wanna see all of these, if you wanna get previews of what I've made, follow me on Instagram. My handle is just at Lisa Kish because I always put my, my, um, my makes on Instagram first because I, I generally wear them and just kind of pop them up there. And actually all the pictures you're gonna see today are from Instagram um, because like I said, it's, it's a bit of a crazy time and setting up just to record for pictures is pretty difficult. But when I wear my makes, which I do all the time, I just get my husband to snap a couple pictures. Okay, so this is the Zoe Tank from True Bias. I just realized that I haven't actually finished the hem, even though I've worn it a bunch. Um, I haven't washed it yet. It does need a wash, so I'll, I'll finish the hem before I do that. This is in a beautiful, beautiful rib jersey from Meter Meter. It might be the Meat Milk brand because I think they are Meat Milk as well. Um, this is so soft and gorgeous. The instructions on this pattern are amazing. 
I, I absolutely love it. You can see just how nice and clean everything is. They have a step-by-step -step video tutorial. Um, I did something a little different in that I wanted to make a built-in bra. I'll put in a picture of how I just put the tank pattern back on top of another section. And let me turn it inside out to show you. Okay, so I just have this part that does not go all the way to the top because I don't want to add bulk into this seam where I'm binding. So, and because it's knit, I could have finished these edges, I didn't. Same thing on the back, they don't go all the way up. And then I just put a little bit of elastic and finish the sides. Now, for this version, I, I didn't do it to the best degree in that I just included the elastic with this in the seams. So I've just included this as like a second layer and I've included in the seams and it has a little bit of elastic. And so because of that, when you wear it, you can see a very small pull just here down the side. To be totally honest, it does not bother me, but I'm going to do another version in black. I have the same fabric in black and I'm gonna do another version in black and I'm going to do, um, to do it more finished where the bra portion is actually separate from the outer portion so that you don't get that pull. Let's see if I can show you here. Yeah, you can see like there's just this little ridge here, right? It's, it's not super visible. But it, but it is there. So for my next version, there are two versions of how you can finish the binding. And what I did was I had already started finishing the binding before I read that. And that's what kept me from being able to do the built-in bra a little nicer. So this time I'm going to do the more labor intensive version of doing the binding, um, but I'm going to do it with the built-in bra in a more neat finish. I'm also going to do it, I think at the cropped length so for high-waisted things mostly because i want to hold on to some of this fabric because um, i have some left over from this and i think if i have enough left over of the black i can make um, a pair of underwear or a bra which i'm going to show you in a little bit and i think that would be amazing in this fabric so i'm gonna th i think i'm gonna make the slightly shorter version i think I would also love to make uh, the dress version of this. So that will be coming up, not sure when. Okay, what's next, what's next? Uh, let's do this one. So you remember last year I made the, uh, what is this called again? It's called the Sydney. Okay, you remember that I made the Sydney dress by Vicky Sews last year with Elisa from Sloths and Orchids. If you remember in my review of last year's makes, this was one that I thought, you know what, I can really improve this and, and make it something that I wear more. Because the problem before is it had metal buttons, it was longer, it was very stiff, and I just didn't wear it because it felt too formal. Not even formal, because formal I could wear in a certain situation. It was too buttoned up, too dressed up for me to wear in regular everyday life. And so what I've done is I've switched out the buttons for plain white. I've taken the hem up about, um, probably about four inches or five inches. I've kept the self belt on the back that I'm using to sort of pull in the waist a little bit. And I haven't softened it yet, but I will. I'll, I'll, I'll like soak it in Coca-Cola or whatever you do to soften it just a bit more. This is a really beautiful linen from um, Michelle of Simone's Rose. And um, I really wanted to use this really well. And it was really important to me that I actually wear it. So I've worn it in the pictures as a, as a duster. Like I just wore it open actually over the Zoe tank. And that was really cute. I don't often do that, but I wore it like with jeans it was a slightly cooler day in May and that was really great but I could see this see wearing this both as like a duster but also just as a straight dress and I could also see wearing it with like a brown braided belt or something like that to break up the blue but um, this is a definite definite improvement okay next we have the Enmore top from Liesl and Co I also said that I was making this so this was made from a beautiful um, textured cotton that I got during COVID at the Patchwork Festival. So like last year when things started to open up a bit and they had the famous Patchwork Festival in Seaches. It's like a very big deal. And I got this, I, you can see I did a hand loop for the uh, button and I used one of the metal buttons that I took off this dress. So this pattern has a built-in bra 
the built-in bra in Woven, and some of you had said to me that you had to size up a couple in the bra, and I agree. I, I have to say I haven't been wearing this much because I find the bra really flattens me and is very uncomfortable against my skin. So part of that probably is the fabric because it's it's a bit of a not rough but it's certainly not a soft soft fabric so it could be partially that and i think it's partially too small um, i actually even opened up the side seams afterwards to try and give myself a little more space and clearly i am not busty so uh, it just it didn't work so i think what i'm going to do is take out this bra and on the next one size up two because i'm going to do a dress this was sort of my muslin version so i think i'm going to do the dress with either a larger like size up the bra because the front part is fine it's just the bra part or i might even still make it in a stretch fabric so that it fits me better now i she has a hack it's not a hack it's actually a version um, of doing it on the bias and creating this chevron pattern so i love it and I love the top itself. I just need to deal with the, the inner bra part because right now it's not comfortable to wear, which suck, what sucks. Next are the sky shorts from Peppermint Patterns. So I also told you guys I was gonna wear these and, or I was gonna make these, pardon me, and I did not have enough fabric to make them out of the beautiful um, pattern fabric that I showed you. I did it again in this viscose batiste from Guthrie and Ghani. This was a one meter yeah, a one meter remnant that I got last year. And these are exactly what I wanted. So they're swingy, they look kind of more like a dress, flat front, elastic in the back. Now, a couple people said to me that they're very, very roomy and you might wanna size down. So I did size down to the, the smallest size. I think I was the third size and I cut it right down to the smallest size because I wanted to make sure that they fit me well. Um, they have a really nice, uh, front yoke here there's the pockets are really pretty I ended up lining these because when I tried them on after I made them they were definitely see-through I could tell because I could see the pockets through the pattern or through the through the fabric um, so I lined them with white batiste I just used the pattern over again um, made it shorter and then just attached it uh, well, in the front I serged it and in the back I just sewed it um, to the existing waistline. And now they fit great. They are very comfortable. I would love to make another pair and extend the length and make them kind of more culotte length or just below the knee kind of length. Um, but this is exactly what I wanted was just a, a flowy, airy pair of shorts. Turned out great. Okay, so now I have two pieces from the fabric store. So the fabric store reached out to me about trying out their linen. I've shown it to you in a previ previous episode. And this is their softened linen. I will link to it below because they do have different kinds. This is so soft and beautiful. If you've ever not bought linen because of the texture, buy this. Because <laughs> it's very, very soft, very um, drapey. It, it, it more crumples than wrinkles. You don't get those like harsh lines. This is really gorgeous stuff. Now I've made, I worked hard to cut two pieces from this two meter, this two meter section. So basically they gave me, they gave me 20 euros to spend on the site plus free shipping. So I got 20 euros of fabric and free shipping. And I found in their remnant section, <laughs> a two meter section of this for 20 or maybe it was 22 but close enough and so yeah so I cut two things from this so let me show you the two things this one I've actually shown you before but I thought it was worth showing you again this is the top of the field of dreams dress that I love you know that I love this is like my favorite favorite new um, dress pattern I will link to it um, and you can see where else I've made it because I've made three now not including this, so four, I guess. And I took the bodice. Um, there is a there is a cropped version of this as a top, and there's a, in in like the official versions. And there's also a peplum. Now I I don't mind a peplum, but I find as someone who doesn't have much of a waist, like my waist doesn't come in. Adding more volume just at the waist makes me e look even more boxy, so or, or straight up and down. Do you know what I mean? I want something that accentuates my waist a little bit. So instead of doing that, I just measured and cut a doubled band wide enough so that 
here goes the train, so that um, I could just go all the way around. And I also sized it down a little bit because this is a very swingy top and I wanted to have a little, have it come in a little more. Now, because this has some room, I didn't have to put a closure on it. I didn't have to put a zipper. So it just sort of, you know, swings and this is fully lined. So you can see here that it is fully lined all the way around. The little straps are on the outside, um, on the inner part of the top, but they're enclosed in the front. And then normally with this, you just surge or sew either the dress portion or the peplum directly to the two layers. I instead did sewed it to the front half and then um, enclosed the raw edges at the back, which was more work of course, and maybe not necessary, but with linen, especially that tr that um, frays so easily, I wanted to do that. So yeah, this is very cute. The only thing with this is I need to wear a strapless bra, um, unless I just don't want to wear a bra, and that's fine too. But I do want to get, I do want to do a bandeau bra to wear with some of these things. And then the other version is this dress. This dress is from Patrones Magazine. I'll put the issue number below. I think it's 403, I wanna say, or 430, one or the other. Uh, the reason why I did this, and I'll put in a picture of the line drawing, is because, whoop, I need to put some fray check on that, is because I often find with shirt dresses that I always wanna bring them in at the waist, just for the reason that I said previously. And why I like this one is this has fish darts in the front and in the back. So it comes in on its own and I thought that's perfect. It also has a shirt tail hem. So it's got a slightly rounded hem. You'll probably see it more in the pictures. It has, oh, it needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Sorry. It has short sleeves. There are cuffs in the pattern. I did not do the cuffs. I just did that folding technique so that um, I could finish this cuffs as is. And it has a back yoke. These are not very good set in sleeves. They've turned out a little bit puffed and puckery. I just did not feel like going back and doing them again. And because of the relaxed nature of the fabric, it works fine. You could say this is a little bit see-through if you're very sensitive to that, but because it's dark, um, and you've got like the front and the back. You've got two layers between the front and the back. I don't think it's a problem for me wearing it. Um, because it's a little, I like to wear it a little bit open. It's a little short. Sometimes I do wear a pair of shorts underneath. Um, and then I can kind of wear it a little bit open. Very comfortable. So nice in the warm weather. Um, and I just put monochromatic dark buttons. So yeah, highly recommend this fabric. It's beautiful. So you might remember this dress from last year. This is the Every Day's a Weekend dress from Pattern Emporium. It is a tiered dress in knit. This is a viscose knit that I got from Minerva. And I'll put in a picture of what it used to look like. And I just found with the viscose knit, it was too heavy with a third tier. I didn't wear it because it was weighing it down and also it was too hot to wear in the summer. So I literally just cut off that bottom tier and surged the edge. I was even wearing it when I surged the edge. <laughs> I was literally like holding it up and just feeding it through. So it's not like the best and it has a bit of a high-low thing going on, which actually I don't mind. I wear it a lot more like this. It's just very comfortable, very soft, very swingy and breezy, which with the third tier it wasn't. But with that, what I ended up doing is I had that little bit of fabric and so I made a little bra and panty set. So these are two free patterns. I've been wanting to get into bra making. Uh, so this is the first one. This is the Hyacinth bra from Olulu. It is a free pattern. And I just used a scrap from the tier that I cut off. And then the bra making supplies are from Studio Costura, which is a company in Madrid, but she is originally from Estonia. And so I believe her mother works the, the bra making supplies portion. And so I got this package from Estonia. So for this, all I used was, I used the Pico edging for the top. I used the strapping that's made for bra straps. And then at the bottom, I used the band elastic and I, 
cross the back because I don't have any racer back bras. So whenever I'm trying to wear something that's that's cut further in, I can't wear it or I have a hard, I, you know, my bra keeps peeking out. So I wanted it to be racer back. This is the most comfortable thing. It is, I, I keep forgetting that I'm wearing a bra, which is always the goal. <laughs> This is not finished to the nth degree. <clears throat> it's more, it's almost a twall, uh, but I will be making more. This is what I would love. Oh, I've got a thread. Of course I have a thread. Um, I do have some of the, of the rib jersey, anything left over in viscose jersey from now on, I'm just gonna make these little bras because they're so comfortable and they fit me so well. Um, she just has a, an Instagram story. Is it an Instagram story? No, actually, no, it's a, this is a free pattern with instructions. So I followed the instructions. Not sure if there's a video instruction or not, but it's, it's very straightforward. And then for the underwear, I made the free scrap, no, sporty scrap thong from Lori Piar. And it's a free pattern as well. This is a, it's a, obviously a, th a thong pattern. Uh, and because it is done in pieces, so like these pieces are separate, the back part is cut in two. You can see that I've done a decorative st stitch going down the back. And these are also elastic free. So if you are intimidated about using elastics for, well, for underwear, or for bi bikinis or whatever, this is elastic free, which is amazing. And I can definitely see just keeping this to the side and cutting these whenever I have space. I will probably make the, the, the thong part a little narrower for me um but the size works and the, the not having elastic really works they're very comfortable and this is the one where she has um on her instagram instagram stories showing you all the steps and showing you how to sew them um for the for the legs you literally just turn it in hang on a second you just turn it in and stitch it so there's no elastic in there. You're just using the elasticity of the fabric. And I'm sure after time, long time, that's not going to, I would imagine that doesn't last for a long, long time. But as something that you're doing with your scraps, um, I think it's a really good use and I will be making more. And then last but not least, certainly not least, because it's one of my favorites, this is the Evelyn skirt from Chalk and Notch. So you guys might remember that I wanted to do a midi skirt with a slit and this pattern came out and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I want. Now there are three versions of this skirt. There is this version, which is for lighter drapier fabrics. It has a flat front and elastic back and the, the slit and it's midi length. For slightly heavier versions, like if I were gonna do it in this linen, there is a version with, um, not, it does not have an elastic back. It has buttons. Does it have a zipper? I don't know, I'll confirm that. Buttons and uh, down the side and darts in the back. And then there's also a mini version of the same thing. So you get three quite different skirts, I would say. Now, this fabric is from the fabric sales. If you remember, they do all, all, almost all dead stock fabric. And I really wanted the kind of French girl style with this. I was thinking like French, 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 French. Anyway, uh, the, this is a dead stock fabric from Inès de la Fressange, who was like the muse of a big fashion designer. I don't remember which one. And then now she's a fashion designer in her own right. Can't get more French than Inès de la Fressange. <laughs> And this is some dead stock. So it really has that French thing going because it's black, white, and red. You can really wear it with lots of different things. Um, this, the slit is exactly the right height as far as I'm concerned. Might, could even go a little higher, but the slit has a facing. And let me flip this inside out so I can show you. Um, my, I had run out of really light interfacing. And so the interfacing I used was slightly too heavy. And because of that, the facing kept flipping out and so I tacked it by hand all the way down so there's the facing that goes all the way around and I just tacked it and since I've tacked it I haven't had any problems at all so this is beautiful again highly recommend this pattern I would love to make another I would love to make uh you know like a full dress with a set with you know like not a crop top but a uh, uh, well, I guess cropped, like, you know, waist, waist length so that you can kind of make it look like a dress or wear it as separates. Love, love, love this. <sighs> okay. 
that I'm not going to say that's everything because actually there's more, but that's 10 things that I have so far made or improved for my summer wardrobe. I have lots more on the go. I have a surprise coming up next week to share with you guys and a life, life update. So I'll be sharing that with you soon, but I am loving my making these days. I'm loving it when my puppy, oh, she looks so cute right now. Also, I'll put another picture. Um, I'm loving it when my puppy just comes up here and sleeps and I can sew and be with my plants and just get a lot of done. It's really, really great. So I'm leaving soon, but I wanted to pop on here and tell you guys um, all about my, my new makes. So I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.